it is a spiritual program. So if folks aren't open to spirituality, it's probably not a good program for them, but it still might be. But anywho, through that process, I got to see and form and create a God that didn't hate and a God that was accessible and free and loving and kind and there for my betterment, um, you know, with love and all that sort of stuff. For whatever reason, I didn't have a God. I didn't see God that way. And I didn't experience mm -hmm. God that way until I got into recovery. And then I could really like begin to focus on what God was and not what God wasn't. Um, and that helped me, I think it like, well, but I think I'm at a point now where it's like, I, and then, so I, I got God in my life to increase my capacity to be in life well and be in life in the way that I wanted. Um, but I still think from a space of like brokenness or emptiness. Um, and I feel like now I really have a desire to have a relationship with God in which mm -hmm. I am a whole person I'm a whole being. I don't need a, I don't need God for a crutch. I don't, you know what I mean? It's like, but I have a desire and I want God in my life. Um, yeah. So it's a, from a state of desire and want versus like need or desperation, which I still believe I need God, yeah. but it's not like this. I don't know, like this, I need it. You know, it's more of like, I, I want it. There's yeah. more of a desire for it. <clears throat> yeah. You, you want to have a, a relationship, I think is yeah. what you're saying, right? Yeah, sorry, that's nothing yeah. to do with hate, but I think it does talk a little bit about how to kind of having to have what that hate did and how it yeah. played out in my life. And once I was able to kind of like work through that, I'm starting to have a different result. So what does it say in, is it Proverbs? Yep, Proverbs. Proverbs. I'm going to read it right out of my Bible because I don't have it memorized, y'all. So Proverbs 6 is where I'm reading from. And it's, the old, it's the Old Testament for folks who yep. might not be aware. Yep, and it's found right after the Psalms, if you're thumbing through your Bible. Um, and I, the reference that I had was started at verse 16 through verse 19. And I'm going to read it. Mine is a New American Standard. Um, I did also looked it up in the King James Version, the New King James. And again, if you go out onto that resource, you can see it, the, the Hebrew, and it'll take you all the places where it's at. So, mm -hmm. all right. So it says, there are six things that the Lord hates seven that are detestable to him. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked schemes, feet that are quick to rush into evil, a false witness who pours out lies, and a man who stirs up dissension among brothers. Mm. So that's, that's quite the list. <laughs> right. It's quite the wording too. <laughs> yeah, it, it is. And, and I know... Um, I, I don't, I'm a word look, I, I like to look stuff up because mm -hmm. I think I have an idea of what some of those things mean, but I really want to understand what it says. And so right. for me, I, I start with Webster first and then I kind of go from there. Mm -hmm. um, I did make some notes and I did look up some other ideas that people had of what those words meant. So if there's any discussion we want to have about any of them, I'll share my thoughts and someone else's thoughts so that you don't have mm -hmm. to take mine as as gospel <laughs> okay. well and one of the things that i was thinking and um you know i was thinking hate like i feel like that's got lost in translation somehow <laughs> you know like mm. like or like or it's gotten like uh generalized or simplified maybe mm -hmm. yeah. um because like the word love in my understanding in the bible there are lots of forms of love mm -hmm. um, but i think but it's all kind of lumped in just love right but I wondered if there was kind of like, if you will, levels of hate, if you will, or like things that were, you know, like a different type of hate, I guess, uh, versus, it, and so it got translated somewhere differently. Um, you know, I, I think what's changed is our tolerance for it. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I, our tolerance for it. I remember growing up, mom used to tell me all the time, don't you use the word hate? That's a bad mm -hmm. word. That's just like yeah. those other cuss words. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, but we'd go to school and we'd use it. And other kids said, I hate you, you know, whatever. Um, but I think it's just become something that we've been desensitized to, unless it's it's to some extreme where we've got someone really uh, focusing on it. Mm -hmm. And and so that it so that it gets attention. And but I think sometimes when we focus, we're just spreading more hate. It's like, okay, wait a second, we got to take a step back and just and and not get caught up in all that. 
So for, I, I think we've been desensitized to it, just like mm. lots of other things that we've been desensitized yeah, to. As in, as in we are calloused to hate or that we label a lot of things hate that might not be? Both, I think. I think we're, we could be so callous, like I'm just gonna give you an example. Y'all can be mad at me if you want to, but it's the truth and we'll just work through it or you'll have to pray for me or what, whatever it is. I don't <laughs> wanna have a discussion because I already know. <laughs> So when I start to hear someone spewing about how much they're um, hated or, or whatever or whatever, and it's all over the media, I have to tell you, I'm just like, roll my eyes. Mm. So I've been desensitized to mm. what's, what's, what's happening because it's, it's every, every time I turn around, being in the industry that I was, I was accused so many times of, of being hateful and doing things because I hated people and and all of those things. And I don't know if it was because I was white. I don't know if it was because I was a woman. I don't know if it was because I was the manager. I have no idea why it was. And I don't, and I feel bad for all those folks that they would feel that way, but it desensitized me so that it, I just like, Oh, I don't even want to hear it. Mm. it, it you know what I mean? And then I think like as ex- kids, you make it flip it. Go ahead. Sorry. So it's like an extreme that it's kind of such an ex- extreme kind of thing yeah. that you're like, whoa, that's not me. So it doesn't even make you open to maybe like, is there something I'm doing? You know, like, because it's so extreme, it's like, I don't, I know I don't hate. Yeah. Or, and, or because it's like, I hear it everywhere. Every time Mm. I, every time I turn around, um, there's a, there's a, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I just, and I don't know if it's, I don't want to deal with it. I don't know if I just don't care. I do care. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I, when I, I want to care about something that I can make a difference in. So anyway, I I think there's a a big, that's just my opinion. So it Mm -hmm. doesn't have to be right. It's just my opinion. And I'm trying to not be insensitive to things and try to hear things and gain understanding those things so I can make quality decisions and move in love and kindness and whatever I need to do. But I think there's a lot of people that that like me or even people not like me that have been desensitized. I don't know how else to describe it. Well, and I wonder if there's like, I don't know, it it feels like, you know, in so many other words and so many other experiences, there's kind of levels or there's like gray area, if you will. 